Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Gavin Kitchens, and in this episode, we are going to do an unboxing of Stellar Horizons by Compass Games, designed by Andrew Rader. It's an epic game of exploration and humanity's expansion into the solar system. This uh, starts in 2030, which, by my math, is still about nine years away, uh, give or take. And uh, for some reason, on Compass Games, they have this listed as a historical game. So uh, if you're having trouble finding it, Go look in uh, among the Vietnam and World War II games and you'll probably find this one. But anyway, I'm um, going to take a look inside this huge, uh, heavy, it's a very heavy box. This is a game for one to seven players, so it does play solo. It's in this long line of very welcome kind of science fact, you know, predictive fiction kind of games we've had over the last few years um, and uh, it's very cool very cool to have that so I don't know how this is gonna work on the screen because it's such a big box oh there's my hands I know there's 20 punch boards in here of materials so this one got a little dinged up but no big deal so we'll uh, Try to do the best we can here. So first things first, we got a bag of bags, which is awesome. And then we've got four dice, and they are one is a percentile dice. So you got your tens clearly marked. The other two red and one black are standard zero through nine ten-sided die. Uh, and they work straight out of the box. Go dice. All right, so now you've got kind of a magazine stock, glossy, you can see the lights reflecting off of it. Uh, rules and scenarios book. Very, very magazine-like. Almost like I should take it to the doctor's office and read it. It's 32 pages, look at that. It's all washed out in the lights. See if we can adjust these a little bit. We'll see what we can do with the lighting or not. So anyway, as I said, it's 32 pages, and there's also a PDF version, so that may help you read it as well. But so this includes the scenarios and the rules. Let's see if we got an index here. We do not, so we'll hunt for the scenario. Um, these are obviously rules going through. Okay. The rules go through 22, and then the scenario start on page 23. So we got two hour, three hour scenario, one to two hour scenario, got a 30 minute scenario, which for me would mean it would take like four or five hours because I'm very AP prone. So there's that. All right, and then we've got, hey, but wait, there's two, two rules and scenarios books. So that's kind of nice. So you can give one to your buddy if you're playing multiplayer and they can fact check you. Seems to be all the rage these days. All right, so now we've got sequence of play. Not a, not a uh, player card. It's a sequence of play periodical. That is also eight pages, but this is, I guess, the compressed version of the rules that, uh, let's see how many copies this you get. Looks like you get four. So that's convenient. No, there's more. Five. Six. I bet there's seven since it says you can play one to seven. And sure enough, seven copies of the sequence of play section. And as it says 3.0 sequence of play, it makes me wonder if this skips here. It says go see that. Just check a little bit real quick. It says, hey, 3.0, go see the other sequence of play. Nope, it's a reprint of what's in in this book. So that's kind of cool if you remember some things from this 3.14 Pi Day uh, production step. You'll know the uh, 3.14 production step here, so that's convenient. Well thought out. So, uh, eight page, seven of those. And we've got another stack. This is, this is a card. Okay, this is the Stellar Horizons Order of the Planet Belts and Discs. So you've got all the satellites here, Europa, Ganymede, Titan, 
transfer modifiers, asteroid harvesting. And again, you're going to get seven copies of that. So you get a whole bundle of stuff. If you're all sitting around the table, you can all just... Check it. Oh, but wait, there's more. All right, so now we've got a board that's self-punched. There's 20 punch boards in here. Let's see if we can put a little more light without blasting everything out. There we go. That glossy black is hard to light. So this is punched out. This is the um, faction sheet. Let's see. This is faction sheet punch board number 25. There are only 20. Goodness. So this obviously has your years starting at 2030. Working right around to 2160, and then the different economic phases within each year. You just keep kind of going around and around and around. Who has the initiative and the terraforming rates for the various planets and moons? And then we've got something else here Stellar Horizon Counter Sheet 26 Addendum. Oh, so this is just, this is some uh, errata. I guess they've they had issued some uh, extra, extra. Yeah, a few small counter problems were found after the game was produced. We captured those problems here, added this correction board to the game. So that's pretty cool. So you don't have to wait for it. It comes right in the box. All right, now to the, now to the cardboard goodness here. These are world cards. This is sheet number 19. So they're unnamed. Oh, I see what we got here. We got hydrogen. Uh, world type is a gas giant. We got volcanoes in a volcanic world. Uh, asteroids, precious metals. Um, these are different. So there's one sheet of those. Here's a sheet of these. Got some rugged terrain, mixed ice, impact basin. So they punch cleanly. These are kind of octagonal. Uh, world cards, even though they're they're markers, so it gives you information about the various worlds. Okay, and we've got a. It just says sheet fourteen front. So this is obviously Jupiter. This is a planet. Obviously, excuse me, it's a planet card, so it's going to be various things will happen. They punch out cleanly. Well, I say that, and they don't want to escape. Can't get out of gravity. So this is a Jupiter card. Obviously this will sit on your table. And if this is one planet, goodness gracious, it's gonna take up a lot of space probably. So definitely we'll probably edge these with a black marker. Make them look really nice. So if you got Jupiter, you gotta have Saturn. Beautiful artwork. I mean I know it's you know probably computer rendered and everything, but just it just really evokes the feel instead of just being kind of a flat or a a real kind of a generic look. It's like we're flying to Saturn. All right, and then we've got our tech tree board. So this is a game board. You can build, that's kind of cool. Just like a kind of in a video game or civilization or something like that. You can, you, know, you build this to get to this, to get to this, to get to this. So we have biology, physics, and engineering, along with our technology track over here on the side. That's a nice square board. Uh, I'd say it's probably about 20 by 20, maybe. All right, so then we've got a oh, big thing of plastic wrapped oh, punch boards. Lots more goodness coming here. Wow. Give a look at the back of the box since we're since we're gonna move it out of the way. So yeah, we've got you know we've had so many. Sciencey games, science the uh, science the crap out of the gaming industry. I guess to uh, paraphrase Matt Damon in The Martian. Uh, all right, so this is kind of already open. So let's go through these punch boards real quick. Wow, oh my gosh! I think it said there's some like 1,200 counters. It's 
good thing they gave us some baggies. Cardboardy goodness. All right, so now we've got Neptune has made an appearance. I'm not gonna punch these out. You've seen they punch pretty cleanly. And we've also got money tokens in the billions, billions and billions of tokens. And then we've got our nationality, uh, probably uh, control markers, all the different countries, North America, uh, China, France, so on and so forth. And then we've got some playing pieces. We've got small defense networks here. Bunch of tokens for that. All right, and here we have some, some have already self-punched. These uh, appear to be water values. They look like water droplets. Twos, ones, some of the ones have fallen out. So now I have to get some bounty paper towels to soak up this water. Uh, one must have fallen somewhere else because I've got four and I've got one. I've got five missing. Oh, there it is. So there's my fifth one. I don't like losing pieces. All right, so we'll just set those there for now. Out of the way. And another sheet. So we've got our physics, biology, and engineering. So that ties to the skill tree, or the technology tree. And we've got some politics markers. Got to deal with politics even in space. Uh, got our year and decade markers, heliocentric transfer, obviously for maneuvering and damage in case the, uh, the uh, aliens come and shoot you. I don't know. All right, another planet board, and this one just self-punched. Uranus. You say it how you want to say it. And then more money, more money, more money. And it looks like we got some moon tokens here. Sedna, Eris, and Dysnumia. What do you call them, moons or satellites? All right, so another sheet with Venus, Ganymede, Callisto, Mercury, as well as more counters. Uh, these are ships. Yeah, ships and bases of the different countries. That's pretty cool. And then deep space astronomy. You can only put space telescopes there. All right, so now we got our national, or uh, I don't want to say countries because it's multiple countries, but our nationality boards, faction sheets, I guess, I guess is what they call them, so that's what we'll call them. These are just self-punched. So we have the North America, U.S. and Canada, and then we got Russia. So it's just the player boards. Uh, and it does look like they're asymmetric, so uh, North America definitely has different funds. Uh, for each decade and yeah, then, then Russia does but and different abilities so it's pretty cool that they're not you know just not just pick a flag and fly it you you play them differently which is always nice another sheet of satellites all right so we got Umbrio, Ariel and Miranda such fun Sh uh, scattered discs. And you got obviously the direction this goes to Eris and Dysnomia here. Alpha Centauri. Whew, a lot of stuff in this. All right. So more self punching resources. Uh, I'm not sure what these are they're representing. Obviously, a resource. Got one. You can see it. Hanging on for dear life there, we'll rescue it. Oh, it fell. Sorry, lost you, buddy. So one, two, three, four. Once again, five's the, five's the number. One, two, three, four, five. Pre fell through. So but obviously a currency of some sort, like the water was, some sort of resource. Probably minerals would be my guess. More ships. The US. And Canada, North America faction. Let's see, do we have an Enterprise? There's always an Enterprise, right? We do have an Enterprise right there. It's a CV5. So we have an Enterprise, awesome. 
Gemini Endeavor and Drominus and Doris Falcon. Hey, we got a Falcon. Uh, but that'll be for next millennium, I'm sure. So some of the other countries' ships are here as well. Telescopes. The the uh, graphic design on these are really nice. The counters are nice and big. You know, they look about an inch and a quarter. Very clean, crisp graphics. Very, very easy to read, you know, what they are. The flags don't dominate, but are there and clear. So very cool. All right, more faction sheets. These are just gonna fall out because they're so heavy on their own. So let's break them out. Coming at you, Japan. South America and Africa. Pretty cool. All right, just keeps piling up. More locations. There's Europa, IO, Titan, Kuiper Belt, the main asteroid belt. All right, more factions. See, this one holds firm. So we have China. And we have Europe. So Europe can go to Europa. So anyway, uh, another sheet with supply stations, spaceports, research stations. These are all small ones. And apparently they're large on the back. I haven't been showing the backs to my detriment. So there we go. So they become large if you flip them over, if you upgrade them. All right, so now we've got fuel, I assume. They're little flames. So maybe it's hydrogen, fuel, something like that. Another, again, another resource marker. And this one only one self-punched. It's right here. Put that off to the side as well. There's a lot of stuff in this box. I was wondering about the price, but there's a lot of stuff here. So here we've got some numbers. So you can play odds and evens, I guess. Probably odds are on the other side, and there they are. We've also got, uh, you can buy resources, and here's where it confirms that these are all resources. So the water, and I guess fuel, and probably minerals is going to be my guess. As you know, we go through this together for the first time. So we've got victory points. Again, sorry, just going to say it again, loving the graphic design on this. It's very, very cool. All right, another sheet of locales, and hey, wish you were here, planet Earth, Vesta, Mars, Phobos, near Earth asteroids, the moon. Yeah, pretty cool. Gosh, there's a lot of stuff here. Hopefully, see how the short scenario works. Goodness gracious. Maybe setting this up for weeks. All right, more ships, more playing pieces. So we got China, China ships, Japanese ships, and I'm not sure on that faction. We have Asia. This is not Asia. Um, don't want to disrespect anybody. It, that was probably the uh, was probably the uh, South America and Africa group. And now we've got another got the Asian Asia group with their faction board right here. And the policy tree board. And this also has the credits on it. Concept design development, Andrew Rader, lead pay test, play tester, Andrew Baird, all the other play testers, you know who you are. Thanks for doing this. The graphic design, Brian J. Miller, good job. Beautiful. Bill Thomas for production, for produced by Bill Thomas for Compass Games. And of course, NASA, JPL, ESA, JAXA, US Air Force provided the photos. So there's the credits which will always be face down because you're using the policy tree. And we got to the bottom. I knew we'd get to the bottom of this eventually. 
So here is the last sheet of counters. So we've got the planet and satellite counters. I guess it's for the home game. You can just like set them up small. I don't know what these are for. It's pretty cool. Uh, maybe these you get these if you're the first one there or something. And I don't know. I'm guessing. Signs of life. More defense networks, research stations. Uh, looks like pirates can even come and attack you. <clears throat> and then we got settlements. One times, three times, four times, or one times, one, three, five, fifteen. And then twenty on the other, ten, four, two. So you get additional settlements on your colonies, maybe. And you're exploring. So, anyway. Now we're going to try to put all this back into the box. This will be fun. Here we go. There's some frames that I already took out. <clears throat> if you pick up a copy of Stellar Horizons, uh, and there'll be a link where you can get it on Amazon if you want in the description, um, be sure to subscribe. Um, you click the bell if you want to. I know people ask you to do that. If you want to get notified, that's great. I'm going to put up videos. If not, just subscribe. That'd be awesome. It'd be a big, big help for me. But also, uh, uh, if you want to share this on Board Game Geek, since I'm not allowed to, uh, you can do that as well. And because uh, you don't have to wait for me to do it because I'm not going to be doing it. So first come, first serve. Get some, hopefully get some thumbs and geek gold for yourself. So anyway, I didn't count them. It says we have 20 <clears throat> punch boards. Some of them went up to 25. And that's including uh, the seven faction boards, policy tree, we got ship counters, we've got lots of, uh, you know, we've got markers, we've got planet locations, moon locations, basically places you can fly to. We've got resource markers, we've got more, more faction boards, more self punching counters. Base locations, faction boards, <laughs> a lot of stuff. There's a lot of cardboard here. I'm trying my best just to keep everything from falling apart. You get this nice technology tree board. Show it to you one more time. You're gonna get not just Saturn. If you act before midnight tonight, you'll get Jupiter as well. The cards, the world cards. The errata counters, and it says it's counter sheet 26. The box said 20, there were 25, and this says it's 26. So you're getting a lot of cardboard here. So just hope you like cardboard. Get the turn track. You're getting seven copies, seven copies of the ooh, reference card. You're getting, be nice if this had fit this way. It doesn't fit this way. They have to go this way. You're getting seven copies of the Sequence of Play booklet. One for each player. You're getting two copies of the rules and scenarios that you have to share. Whew, this is not all going to go back in. You get a bag of bags to store it all. Three e ten-sided dice and one percentile dice. One of which just fell on the floor, and I'll grab that in a moment. If yours is like mine, you will be getting a few pre-punched counters, which I will sort out later. And that is everything that you're going to get in this big, massive, heavy box of Stellar Horizons from Compass Games, designed by Andrew Rader. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!